So let's go over to Michael. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you see that okay? Starting to, yes, we got it. Okay. Um, this is Alien Mitt. Um, it was geared into the uh, Cincinnati um, AAW Symposium exhibition. Uh, being an Englishman, I never played basket, uh, baseball before. So the baseball that's in the middle there is a uh, regulation size, and I had to find an old uh, baseball and take it apart to get the um, shape of the, the pattern. pattern around the outside. So is, that's turned and carved, is that right? Yes. Um, the actual outside body, um, it was all turned in pair. And then I used... Um, like string to pull those in a little bit. That's why it's an odd shape. Ah, I see. And what's the... In, yeah. How do you get such a flawless paint finish? What's under the paint? That's just paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to go through them fairly quick because I think I've got too many and I don't want to hog the whole program. So I'm going to go through them fairly quick. Uh, go for it. Piece, um, it's called Around Autumn. Uh, it's just a sphere and then pierced and textured and pyro. Uh, there's one of my teapots that's also a pair called Asian tea. Now, is that spout hollow all the way down? Uh, no, no. Uh, I was going <laughs> to ask you, okay, well, how did you do that, huh? Uh, that cost you extra. <laughs> <laughs> a flexible drill. Yeah. <laughs> this is a collaboration between Harvey Meyer and myself. This was uh, geared into the exhibition in Atlanta uh, symposium. Obviously, he done the the uh, beading, and I done I done the spout, the handle, and the lid. This is a black ash burl. The wire handles there are made from a coat hanger. Mm. Nice. nice well, I like the way that turned out, that one. This is um, Brown Betty, which I really surprised myself. Um, the, the most famous teapot in the world is the Brown Betty. And I decided to make one. And then I airbrushed the brown on and on the maze how close to ceramic it looked but it, that's Bradford pear as well I like the way that turned out as well uh, this piece was geared into <coughs> I think it was the no it wasn't the Atlanta symposium I can't remember which one but uh, that was geared into another AAW symposium exhibition so these are turned and then car pierced and carved yeah yeah, it turned, uh, then the um, negative space was cut out with an NSK, and then the uh, veins in the leaves were done with pyro, and then it was textured in between, and then on top of that it was air, or put an airbrush, but airbrush paints to get the full colour. Yeah. It's amazing. This one, um, I just finished a couple of months ago and I've entered it into the exhibition um, which is going to be held in Chattanooga and uh, I don't know the results of whether it's got in or not. That was made from one, I made a vase, then cut the leaves out, textured both sides, done the same thing, pierced them, uh, pyroed, um, and textured in between and then coloured them. And that, at that time, they all balanced on this leaf at the bottom. But over time, the uh, left-hand side has just sunk. It is about a quarter of an inch off the table now. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, how long have you been turning? Uh, only about, well, I say only about between 12 and 15 years. And is, did you start in the States or did you start and learn in Britain? No, I started over here basically when I retired. Um, the first couple of years I was still working. So, and I didn't, 
I'd done a foolish thing. I didn't take any lessons, which I really regret now. I just wasted two years. But uh, I, anybody that's starting to turn, I advise them to take lessons. You, yeah. you make all the mistakes, but I work through it. But having worked with tools all my life, I think I have a little bit of a jump with most people when they come from different fields. This is another sphere uh, called Cranny. That's also Bradford Pear, and then it's just Pears. <coughs> huh. uh, this piece, I think it's about 12 inches tall and turned very thin, obviously, in the same technique. So what explains your fascination with reproducing leaves? <laughs> um, I keep looking at other leaves to uh, try and turn. I, I like things that are very realistic. And um, I find the maple leaf is easiest, or I think looks the best, compared with like an oak leaf or something, you know. You're certainly getting a very realistic leaf, that's for sure. It's amazing. I think... Uh, this is a collaboration between myself and my ex-wife, Cynthia, Cynthia Gibson. Uh, obviously, I turned the teapot and she's done the, um, uh, the pyro work. It's fantastically good. Yeah, yeah, I really like that one. And I think there's another <coughs> one there. This is the other one. I really like this one. That's also fantastically good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, her work is very good, very good. That's amazing. Now uh, this one, I used the same technique, except what I did with this one, I made two vases, and I, to get some more movement into the leaves, as you can see, these, these curl over and go in different directions. Uh, this piece has been jurored into the um, exhibition that's in Chattanooga. Um, I forgot the week. What was it called? Um, huh, I can't remember, but it got jurid in. So I'm very happy with that. So you can we see saw, this live. We uh, saw this a couple of months ago. You, you showed us this a couple of months ago too, I think, this one. Um, yes, I've got one that's similar, but it hasn't got such movement in the leaves. Ah. This one's now up in um, Minneapolis and Paul, the AAW headquarters, where it will be um, photographed by Tib. And it'll go into the catalog one. And it'll also mostly be in the AAW journal. Is that two spears? I, could you say that again? Is that two spears? Did you start by turning two spheres or were they vases? Oh, two, no, two vases I turned with a lot of angles in it. Okay. So you could get the shapes you want out of the vases. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. How about yourself? This one. Um, well, I'm glad. All the black know. hair that you can see. Black is still There's this guy. And the insides here. turn black to give the um, impression that it's, she's got black hair, which I really like. But you have to explain it to people. From a photograph, it looks like it's painted on there. Uh huh. This one's in the Georgia Museum of Art in Athens. Um, it's a, a made from pear, and obviously uh, made it like a tin cup. Um, if you, or enamel cup, I should say. If you look at the little chips, before I put the blue on, I uh, painted it black. And when I was trying to take some of those white spots off, I realized that it looked like it had been chipped. So all the way around, like on the bottom there, where it would get hit constantly, I put a few chips in and made it even more realistic. <laughs> <laughs> That's remarkable. This one was geared into, um, let me see. Oh, well, look at that. Traces. This one was in the Traces exhibition, which I think was in Atlanta. <laughs> That's uh, pyro work that I did. and. The white stuff is like a, it's sort of like um, sheetrock mud, but it's like a plasticky stuff. But I found it in Ace Hardware and I thought I'd try it. And then I smoothed the areas out to make, or put it around the leaves that I had burned on there. 
this one was um, dueled into, in Phoenix, it was dueled into the exhibition, the AAW Symposium. And if you look, the top part there is a um, made from a teapot. And the, the, the other, or the fancy work on it, I think I got the next picture, yeah. This is what it looks like. It's called um, From the Ashes. Um, that's all airbrush work. You okay. go back, you can see it again. Amazing. And, oh, that also got um, the people's choice. So I was very happy with that because it gave me some money. <laughs> yeah. This is another teapot. It's called um, High Tea. And you can see the little heart in the handle. Those are astonishing. And this is another pierced um, tube. That's about 12 inches long and about three inches in diameter. And a couple of herons. It was the hardest part was actually turning it because it was like a a foot long, and to, it's it's okay. The first six inches getting it in, but when you start to get to the bottom, it gets really complicated. Yeah, it's very difficult to turn cleanly deep inside like that. Yep. Yeah, and it's a hole at the other end. It's just a tube, which. I hadn't thought of when I started, but I've managed to get around that. I think if I was uh, going to make that, I'd make it as a tube and cut the bottom out and hollow from both ends and then glue the bottom back in. Yeah, I could have done it that way. This is my latest teapot that I made, Live, Laugh, laugh and Love. What wood is underneath that? That's Bradford Pear as well. This is a collaboration i done with Louis Van der Kuyp. Mendico, I think that's how you pronounce his name. French Canadian lives in Ottawa. I turned the teapot and he done all the artwork on it. Amazing. Uh, that's a uh, let's see if I've got it written. Just a natural edge bowl teapot. I can't remember the wood now. Um, I sort of quite like the way that turned out. I keep in the bowls uh, all together there. It's quite ambiguous. <laughs> well, these, uh, I'm, I teach little kids one day a week at a school here for uh, kids and their parents in crisis. And they were having, we, or our club was having a show uh, for the charity for that school. It's the most amazing place. Uh, that's another whole story, but I made these plates for charity. Oh, um, this is another enamel teapot that I made. It's also got some chips. Uh, this piece is currently in an exhibition in Athens, um, and it won and uh, got first place in like the 3D. It's called Spider Tea. Oh, I did the uh, the artwork. The spider is done with um, India ink pens. That's a maple, no, yeah, I think it's a maple that was stained. So I call this tea stain. That's a very good use of the coloring in the wood. Yeah, yeah, it turned out beautifully. This was a, um, a collaboration with John Maeda, who lives in Hawaii. His pyro work is unbelievable. Michael. How do you attach these handles and stuff? They it looks so seamless. Uh, it takes a long, long time. The spout and the handle, uh, just getting that fitting. That's what's the time-consuming part about it. And it is held in there with a dowel, um, which doesn't go through to the inside. It's still, it's just as smooth on the inside as it is on the outside. It's a right. It's a long, long process. <laughs> it's beautiful thank you yeah that's amazing I could show you another half a dozen shots of that and it's really amazing piece that's astonishing uh, artwork the teapot that I made and I've done the pyro work and you can see it's textured between the leaves as well it's called tea leaves that piece 
Uh, this was during into the merging um, exhibition, the AA Symposium. I can't remember where it was now. It didn't come up on my where the name of it is. And this one won the Masters Award, so I was very pleased with that piece as well. Uh, this is Three Feathers. Um, turn the very, very thin bars and then cut the feathers out and then fire over them. Wow. Yeah, that was quite, well, it wasn't too bad, actually. It just this piece it. was cured into the Encanvas, the waves of grain. If you look at the actual kernels, they're hollowed out as well. Can you see my pointer? Yeah. So okay, those are carved. Well, those are carved uh, or low relief. They're like rever uh, carved into yeah. the surface. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Actually, Amazing. it's funny. I put three pieces in, and I thought this was the worst piece, and they picked that one out of the three. It but, shows. I mean, as long as you get in, I don't care. <laughs> one is never the best judge of one's own work. <laughs> this is um was a plate. And uh, then the same technique as I told you before. Oh, that's it. Okay. Wow. Well, thank you. That is amazing. Thank you, Michael. Very yeah. impressive. Nice work, Michael. Very thank nice. Fan. Fantastic work. I have a question about your piercings. How thin, how thin a wall do you like before you start your piercings? Oh, the sooner the better. I try and make mine uh, three thirty seconds. I was take, going down to a sixteenth, but when you do it on a um, like a hollow form, I found that the end grain was collapsing, and then I turned all my teapots and hollow forms end grain uh, to stop a little bit of movement. But I found when I got into a sixteenth, the tops were collapsing. So I stopped doing that. I, what I've done is made it thicker. So 330 seconds is roughly what I aim for. Amazing. Yeah, great work. Uh, the one teapot, it looked like it was a self-portrait. Do you was that a self-portrait? Uh, a teapot? Yeah, the one, the comical one where they were pouring the tea oh, in the Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> no, that was um, from the story um, Alice in Wonderland, is it? There's a collaboration with somebody, but I haven't been able to yeah. catch the name. It was um, John Mydock. He's, um, he, he lives in Hawaii. Uh, and um, his pyro work is incredible. He also is a very, very good turner as well. He's very, very well known, but you don't see a lot of his work quite often. Michael, tell me, these all began on a lathe? Yes, they all turned, yeah. Everything's turned. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> if I can crowd in here, I'm the proud owner of a little Japanese teacup from Michael and Cynthia from St. Paul Symposium, <laughs> World of Woodturners Exchange. Is it one of the little dolls? The yeah. dolls? Yeah, she does a beautiful job on those. Stoning. Any more questions for Michael? Yeah, Michael, um, I like this um, spider teapot you showed um, <clears throat> with a spider sitting on it. Is okay. that... Um, just a three-dimensional um, or a painting to, to make it look three-dimensional or is there anything added um, and is it really three-dimensional like it's a painting legs added or something like that it's a painting all the way down yeah that's that's really great it's, it's amazing if you see it on the photo it looks like the the spider is sitting on there and the, the legs are in the air the great. trick is the, the trick is the shadows the shadows are very beautifully done that's what makes it look like that yeah, great work. Thank you. This is Mike, Mike and I in the same club, and I talked him into entering a record power contest a few years ago in the Masters category, in which uh, the club won a uh, record coronet Harold lathe and two chucks from record power and every jaw set they had and a uh, shop vac <laughs> or a dust collector. Mike, back up a bit. We're just seeing the top of your head. 
<laughs> now we see you. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? And I'm going to say thank you very much, Michael. That was a, a very inspiring show, and it's going to be hard to top. <laughs> well, thanks for allowing me to showcase some of my work. I I had so many that I could show you. I thought I, I can't go on, or it'd be all. I had to stop myself from looking up more for you know. Well, I asked you for a highlight reel, and that's what you gave us. So there you go. Thank you. Wood shop. Thank God for wood. <laughs>